Hello, Mario. So I'm here early. <clears throat> and just taking the night off. So I'm here early. And I have Perfect Dark and Paper Mario. And I do not have an Akira re review. I've seen half of it, and I've got a story. But we'll get there in a bit. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's a story chat. So let's do, um, I think we're up to Air Force One. Um, I think we're good. Uh, hi everyone that's normally not here. Because I stream so goddamn late. Have you thought any more about that proposal I gave you, sir? My answer remains the same. I'm sorry, Trent, but no. I won't loan the Pelagic 2 to Datadyne. Now please, can we move on to other matters? But this is a golden President opportunity Obamo. to show that America has faith in its industries and will back them. Damn it, man. I say no, and I mean no. I'm not gonna change my mind on this. Damn it, man. I need my advisors to be unbiased. And recently you've not been giving me the impartiality I require. Let it go, and we'll say no more. This is your last chance. As you wish, sir. I assume. I love the way Trent says assume. My last chance? <laughs> you fool. That was yours. <laughs> oh God! What what a bunch of what a bunch of jokers. Okay, so welcome to the plane level. There was a train level in Goldeneye. There's a plane level here. Um, God, I have to remember everything. Now, I'll tell you why I only saw half of Akira in a bit. It, it's ridiculous. Honestly, it's just a ridiculous series of events. Hey, that's not... Uh, in a bad way, sadly. Um, okay, I'll tell you, I I'm gonna have to explain this later, but... Essentially what happened was... Cargo bay has been lowered. I don't- I- Hmm. Essentially what happened was, Ross wanted to watch it in VR with me. Because he's watched a, a lot of movies in VR, he thought it would be a good time. So, uh, Desert... Um, Sphinx... Dave for a bit, uh, Giwi, one of Ross's mods, we're- we're all in the movie world. And we're hanging out, and, uh... You know, the idea was- was to not, like, lampoon the movie, but to enjoy it together. And in the VR setting, you can watch it in a movie theater, and it genuinely does look really cool. And I got to watch half of it like that. But, um, the movie world borked in an update. So, the first thing was I noticed was none of the movies were loading, and none of the movie worlds had Akira. You know, the single most popular anime movie from 1987 or 8, whenever it came out. Well, <laughs> you get the idea. It's a popular movie. It didn't... Oh. Well, it's a popular movie, but it just didn't... Um, it, they didn't have it in the movie world, so we tried custom URLs. Found a bunch of custom URLs, Ross was trying real hard to get it to work. Could not get it to work. Um, cause you can feed a custom URL to the thing, it'll play the movie. So that didn't work. So, this is an hour 
of effort. And finally at 4 a.m., Norix sends me requests. I'm like, okay, join in. I was thinking, like, it's, you know, we'll just have to watch it. Oh shit, look, Rosorama. This is what it was last night. It was a movie screen where Ross was trying to make us watch a movie. Wow. Uh, that was oddly perfectly timed. So Norix joins in. And is like, well, I have a, a world that we could try to, you know, watch this movie at. He's like, I'll go check and see if they have it. He comes back a, a couple minutes later. He's like, yeah, they have it. Have you it works. Any more about that so at 4 a.m., I'm like, guys, I can't watch this movie. I'll be up until 6. It's a two-hour movie. And they're like, you want to just watch half of it? So I said, okay. So. So we watched half of it. And I don't have a full review of the movie yet. Why watch half? Just so we could, like... Just so we could say we did it. And now, tonight, I'm gonna watch the other half. What part am I at? Um, Tetsuo has a bunch of pills in his hand. Hey, that's not... Why? Me? A good movie. It, seriously, I, like, the first half of that movie so far, it, it, it got me. It drew me in. And I see so many things. Like, I see the Half-Life elevator. I see the, um... The influence on Midgar from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, the animation's really good. The, the fucking... It's weird. It's fucked up. It's... It's, uh... It's good. It's less Blade Runner... ...and more... ...like... ...wacky. Like, it's not a noir... ...in the cyberpunk world. But, um... But no, it's- so far it's good. I'll have a full review when I watch the full thing. And, uh, I'm intrigued to finish watching it. It's less Blade Runner, more Perfect Dark. That's an interesting way to put it. Well, no complaints so far. Uh, the only weird thing I'll say before I, I do my full review is... Goblin Babies. It was the, uh, dub. The, the version they had in the, in the VR world was the dub. It was the good dub, not the shitty one. I would have watched Sub if they had it, but whatever they had, we watched. So. The bad dub is still good for a laugh. That's cool. Uh-oh, someone in chat just said, Weeb fight in chat. Oh no, Subs versus Dubs! Another thing to hate each other over! Fuck pineapple on pizza! So I, I, I really don't know how to do this mission. This is a very specific thing that I have to do, and I am failing miserably at it. Vinny, another nice weather night you want to enjoy? Well, yeah, that and I want to finish Akira and just have Saturday night to myself. Um, I mean, that's why I don't have a schedule, so I could just stream whenever I want, you know? I don't really... I, I make the mistake of explaining sometimes why I want to take off, but truthfully, it's just sometimes I just don't want to stream at night, and I just like having the night free. No more than that. Did you enjoy the amazing Akira soundtrack? Yes, I did, but I didn't hear a ton of it. Um, I heard, you know, the half of it, <laughs> so far. But yeah, it was weird. It was fucking weird. It's no Vangelis in, you know, stylistically, it's not Vangelis at all. But that's not what I was expecting. But what I got was definitely not what I was expecting. I was just like, what are these weird noises? Why? 
But then, um, about an hour into the movie, whenever the music popped up, I was like, Oh, I like this. Wasn't one of your charity incentives to play through Sniper 2, correct. Starring Steven Seagal. Do you think you'll do a review video when you finish? I'll probably do like a 15 minute discussion live. Have you thought any more about that proposal I gave you, sir? Now, let's retrieve the evidence. Okay, um, retrieve the evidence. Hey, that's not. Guys punching me in the face. Knock the guy out in the front of you and activate the switch. This guy? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna need help because I don't remember. This game still remains pretty vague. There we go. Suitcase. I got a laptop gun. Thank you. Okay, good. Being PC when? I, I am... Before the weather gets shitty, but I- I don't, um... I don't even want to think of the logistics of being PC just yet. I'm gonna try to work through my other charity incentives over the next couple weeks, um, to a month, and then I'll think about being PC. Vinny, are you regretting coming up with that bean thing yet? Yep! Are you destroying your old PC so if this one breaks, you have no backup? Uh... Yeah, yes. Hey there. Hello. Hey there. Hello. How's things? Totally normal. Buy a budget PC and trash it. Goodwill PC. Uh, locate present, okay. Is this some code for being PC as in politically correct? No, nope. uh, personal computer I think PC stands for in this case. Is on this level to it's a weird analysis. You should go into movie reviews. You should, what? Did you know that the, uh, the monolith in 2001? Do you know what that is? You're in danger. Trent is trying to kidnap you. You can't make accusations like that without evidence. I assume that you have some. Assume. This is a recording of a meeting between Trent and the other conspirators. It seems overwhelming. I'm in your hands. What do we do now? Welcome to Flight Simulator 2020, starring Alien Ship. What the hell was that? We have to get you to the escape pod. How can we? I gotta find the damn escape pod. Why are they shooting at me? I, I don't know. Oh, 
hope I'm going the right way. This is the money plane. You want to bet on an alligator? Wrestling a man? I just, I made it, um, whoa! See what I did there? I changed it so it's not gross anymore. It's fine now. Escape pod is at the bottom of the plane. Okay. This way, sir, I think. I think. Okay, objective complete. Hi, Mark. Do you think commercial airliners should come with escape pods? Y yeah, just in case Homelander reaches them. It's a bit of a, a reference there to the television program, The Boys. Homelander just wants milk. Hello. Hey. How's things? How would an escape pod work? Hey, what's up? Like, it would have, oh, I guess, a parachute. The president's room is on this level, Joanna. Again, I don't know the logistics. It's like two things in life I don't understand is being PC and, um, uh, escape pods on commercial airliners. Who are you, young lady? Mr. President, you're in danger. Trent is trying to kidnap you. You can't make accusations like that without evidence. I assume that you have some. We're going to be hearing that word assume it's quite a bit. Of a meeting between Trent and the other conspirators. It seems overwhelming. I'm in your hands. What do we do now? Skip that. What the hell was that? Okay. Escape, escape pod. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I got this this time. That was an innocent, I think. Uh oh. God damn, do I just like soak bullets? I, I'll be honest. Um, regenerating health in first person shooters these days. I used to think it was a terrible idea. I'm like, no, man, I like health packs. And now... Sometimes I think maybe I'm okay with a little bit of regenerating health. Depending on the game... Why are they shooting at me? However, you know, I am playing this on the hardest difficulty. There are no health packs. <laughs> There are no health packs. Let's retrieve the evidence. It depends on how the game was designed. If it was designed for health packs, then, you know, that's a different type of gameplay. It's just, I'm playing this on a... on a difficulty that... wants me to suffer. Hey, that's not... Med packs are meant to pad out playtime with BS. Uh, sometimes. 
I'm not like the biggest fan of the Call of Duty tactical like campaign stuff where you just hide behind a rock and your eyes like stop bleeding. But I do um, appreciate that I can. I do appreciate that I can save some time. Wait, why? Why are they now recognizing me? Uh, someone said, I like where games where med packs are something you can carry and use. So, like Bioshock? Someone said, um, people get too complacent with quality of life mechanics, they've grown soft and nubile. <laughs> There's plenty of games that punish the player. I mean, you're not wrong on some level, like, now even I am, like, fucking not happy about... Hey, that's <laughs> like, playing a level over and over and over again because a random NPC stormtrooper got, like, a perfect headshot on me, but, um... What the motherfuck? What the motherfuck? I am Joanna Dark, stewardess. What, what's going on here? Vinny, do you realize what nubile means? It, yes, I, I know what it means. I figured it was a joke. The steward you knock out alerts the entire plane when he sees you. The fuck? Well, we'll just do that then. I mean, this game also is its own beast. Oh, you know, Rare oh. took the GoldenEye thing and expanded it to dizzying heights with the amount of ways you can... Look at this guy's scar. Oh my god. With the amount of ways you can fail a mission on this difficulty... Vinny, have you tried No One Lives Forever? No, I've heard good things about that series, and there's a... There's a PC version that works now. I think it's almost like a little miniature oh, remaster. Hello. It's like a James Bond-esque parody first-person shooter. I've heard very good things about it. Who are you, young lady? Mr. President, you're in danger. Trent is trying to kidnap you. You can't make accusations like that without evidence. I assume that you have some. This is a recording of a meeting between Trent and the other conspirators. It seems overwhelming. I'm in your hands. What do we do now? Alright, here we go again. We have to get you to the escape pod. Shooting at me. I had no choice but to shoot him in the dick. There's no other way. Wait, wasn't that supposed to be a second Cyclone? I love the way this gun reloads. 
Like, what does that even mean? Perfect dark. Now, let's retrieve the evidence. Hey, that's not. At, at one point, the reason I just stood still is because the bullets kept like shooting me backwards, and I had so little health. I was like, why even bother? No, no reason. No need to escape. Unload your entire clip into the blondies. They have high accuracy and are no joke. And the frame rate breaks their AI, so when they're crouching, they just shoot forever without having to reload. Hey, that's not. I think everyone's alerted to my presence now, so that could that could mean mission over. Drop the gun. Yep. Rose tinted glasses, I have. Vinny, will you play Golden Light again? There's a new update. There's too many games to keep up with. Hey, that's not. <sighs> Fuck off! Just run by the guards in the, uh, to the elevator. You can't avoid them and you need them alive. So just run. If they see me, just run. Did you already send that bike down? Uh... Like that? Anyone's just joining, I did talk about my Akira misadventures earlier, but when I finally did watch the first half of it in VR, it was actually really great. I had never watched a full movie in VR, and it ended up being kind of incredible. You really feel like you're in a movie theater. Mr. President, you're in danger. I'm gonna watch the rest of it tonight. You can't make accusations like that without evidence. I assume that you have some. This is a recording of a meeting between Trent and the other conspirators. It seems overwhelming. <sighs> I'm in your hands. What do we do now? What the hell was that? We have to get you to the escape pod. Follow me. Some of the guards have lived. That's good. That, that's good. I just have to memorize where the Mr. Blondes are. <laughs> it's not there. Holy fuck. Now imagine doing this with a controller. Like an N64 controller with no dual analog. Sure, it had lock-on, like auto-aim, but... Okay, Mr. President, please don't... ...peek around this corner. Whatever you do, Mr. President. Okay. 
here we go. Live. Okay, he's good. Uh, next objective is secure Air Force One flight path and detach UFO. So where, where's that? The Spock pit? Pilots killed. Thank oh, thank God. I can't detach that tube from the fuselage. Can you take it out? Piece of cake, Joanna. What's this? <laughs> What? Will you stop playing around and shoot? Out of options. Joanne, brace yourself for impact. I love the chat's reaction to the alien. If they, you know, the, the chat members that weren't here for the previous stream and are just watching this randomly for the first time today, and they're like, yo, wh why is there an alien now? find the jamming device and check that Elvis is okay. Not forgetting the president, of course. Well, here we go. Retrieve presidential medical scanner. Activate the stress beacon. Shut down enemy jamming device. Retire presidential clone. Okay. Good shoot. More Mr. Blondes. So now I have to try to navigate my way through through this giant outdoor Siberia-esque level, and I don't remember it. So that's going to be a good time to get lost.
Okay, so far so good. Vinny, in all seriousness, how much does the mouse and keyboard change the experience? Uh, it's great. It's the- you know what? It's not just the mouse and keyboard, it's the 60 FPS and the widescreen. All of it works in perfect harmony to make the game still bullshit. But no, if you like Perfect Dark, and I love Perfect Dark, but remembering how some of these missions went on this difficulty has given me, um... What's the word? Oh, stomach worms. But, um, yeah, no, it's- it's- ooh, it's good, it's good. Using mouse and keyboard for this game definitely improves the experience. The music is still great, the atmosphere is still great. The whole weird alien plotline is still campy and amazing. So that wasn't the clone. Wait, wait, what if we just bring the clone back to HQ and say that we have the president? D they won't know. This mission's not over yet. Now it's over. It's, it's kind of just a matter of figuring out which objective to tackle first. There's the escape pod. Dude didn't even hear the bullets whizzing past his, fu his fucking face. Okay, presidential scanner picked up. Uh, so even with the quote-unquote 60 FPS mod, we're getting some... some chunk. Some chug. Then again, this was never really fully 60 FPS. If it ever hit 60 FPS for a couple seconds, it would, like, dip back down to, like, 40 every now and then. So next objective is activate distress beacon. Is that also here? That's the escape pod.
Next is, um, shut down enemy jamming device. How old is this game? It's insanely low poly. This is from... 2000, I believe. Uh, this is an N64 game. It's almost weird to live in a world, in a land, where people don't know what Perfect Dark is. Because this was such, like, a popular game at the time. And I'm almost dead. One more hit and I die. I'm not faulting chat member for not knowing. There's a lot of popular shit that I don't know about. Hell, I've never seen Samurai Jack. Which... Chat lovingly informed me last night through the use of some vulgar language. Some poo-poo pop-up language that they were like, Vinny, you need to- you need to watch that show. Or how come you didn't watch it? So... But yeah, it's just a weird thing. Like, I remember everyone was talking about this game at school. At school. When, uh, when it came out. And this was like one of the, you know, this and like Metal Gear Solid. I remember having a lot of conversations about. Oh, and Zelda Ocarina of Time, of course. Those were, those were some pretty, you know what game also had a lot of conversations now that I think about it? Fucking body harvest of all games. Now that is a good game that plays like shit a little bit. No, no dialogue for Elvis. Elvis, he'll be able to protect the president. Okay. Will you be streaming later? No. Vinny, would you stream Body Harvest? I've considered it a bunch. I just don't know if I'd be able to handle all the boring parts. There's some really great shit in that game, but a lot of it's also kind of slow and boring. What is Body Harvest? So before GTA 3, uh, Rockstar's team, under a different name, I think, made Body Harvest. You are an orange space marine, and you're sent back to, like, Greece in the 40s. DMA. DMA made it. Alright, and you're basically a third-person marine man fighting a bunch of giant enemy bugs. They're aliens. They went back in time to try to destroy humanity. And you solve a bunch of, like, weird puzzles. You go into houses, you can drive all of the local vehicles. And then you go to a different time period. And then, like, you know, a different one. There's four time periods and then the future. And each one has, like, a GTA-style, like, control any vehicle, get tons of different weapons, complete objectives with bugs, solve puzzles. It's a really cool game. But it's a little chunky. Like, the, the controls are a little clunky. The game is blurry as fuck, because, well, you know, N64. But I really loved it. Do you harvest bodies? No, you don't. They do. The bugs do. You gotta, uh, stop them from harvesting bodies. Intruder! I remember getting that game. Tried Jet Force Gemini. Don't like it. Played it. My friend had it. Tried so many times to get into it. 
Maybe it was because it ran like shit, or just the controls were weird. I don't know. I did not like that game. Uh, and I am dead. Uh, Body Harvest, though, here's the thing, though. I might like it if I had it. Because when I got Body Harvest, I did not like it either. I thought that game was slow and just boring. Um, and some of it is, like I said. But the more I played it, the more I got into it, and it became one of my favorite N64 games. If this didn't age well, and it didn't in some spots, I don't think that aged well either. So I'd probably struggle to find as much good to say about it. Would you like it better if it had keyboard and mouse support like this? Maybe. I mean, it would help. I think there is a good game in Jet Force Gemini, and if it was improved in the same way... So, it, someone said Jet Force is on the Rare Replay collection. I don't remember it. Is it? Okay, so did they improve the visuals, or is it like a straight-up N64 port? Yes? What, what's the answer? Better resolution and frame rate? Okay, well... So then I might, you know, ha being in possession of Rare Replay Collection, I might enjoy it. Um, there's supposed to be a presidential scanner around here. It's slightly improved and the controls help it a lot. Okay, good to know. Would that be the first time you turned on the Xbox in like three years? A couple years, yeah. I guess at the end of the day, though, playing this and, like, Turok 2, even with all the improvements that Turok 2 had, I really did not like that game's design. Like, streaming Turok 2, the PC port, I was so excited. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a 10 out of 10. And it ended up being like a 7.5 out of 10, because the level design held it back so much. Just tedious, boring, me getting lost. Now, it, it's a product of its time, so I don't fault it for being what it is. But that was one of my, um, my big disappointments. This is a, a less of a disappointment. I think this holds up better than Turok 2. The missions are pretty short, once you know what to do. And you have a choice of, like, difficulty, so... You know, you can tailor it to the way you want to play it. No matter how you play Turok 2, you still have to contend with... Dark, samey mazes. But... If someone, like, took Turok to... Turok? Not Turok. Well, you could say Turok. That would have been a cool naming scheme. Turok, and then Turok. And then Banjo 3E. But no, I think if, if someone took Turok 2's engine and just... Like, fixed up the level design or made a new game from it... With more modern, you know, well not even modern, but shorter levels that aren't so... Twisting.
Chat, what the fuck is this? Mr. President, please, do not run in the line of fire. Christ on a cross. Vinny, the Turok 2 port you played actually did shorten the levels? Oh god. Black Borders? Uh, I... I never even really considered those Black Borders. Sorry about that. I could have gotten rid of those... ...several streams ago. What was the first first-person shooter you played? Says chat member. Well, I didn't have a PC for a long time. So, it wasn't Doom. Um, it might have been... Oh my god, it might have been Turok 1. No, it wasn't Half-Life. It wasn't Half-Life, because, uh... Half-Life, I think Turok 1 was 97. So it was probably that, or Doom 64. Which came out first, Doom 64 or Turok? Turok did, then it was Turok. I might have seen, like, footage of first-person shooters, but I don't think I actually... ...had one. Until Turok, and then I got Doom 64. Played that for a long time. There we go, gotta get him to Elvis. And then when I got a PC, I played Half-Life. I saw it at my friend's house, loved it, got a PC eventually, played Half-Life. And that became probably my favorite person. If I had to, like, tell you, okay, which my, which game of the first-person shooter genre is my favorite? It's probably Half-Life. It still holds up, too. I don't feel any of the bad feelings like Torok gives me. Or even this, sometimes, um, when I play Half-Life 1. Half-Life aged really well compared to Goldeneye. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, like, Goldeneye and Perfect Dark are still a really good games that hold up. But I would recommend not doing what I'm doing, which is playing on the hardest difficulty. Just play on the first or second one, and the levels are short, you get the story, you get good shoot, and you get body armor. And less frustration. You can locate the clone with the scanner? Okay, cool.
Fuck that! Clone eliminated. One mission left, I believe. It's a shutdown enemy jamming device, and apparently there's turrets that are near it, so I want to be very, very careful about that, wherever it may be. This is the right way. I'm- I'm stressed. This game is stressing me out. I see- I see a turret. What was that? Oh, there's a glitch. The jamming. It's coming from that ship. They, they weren't there a second before that, right? It's like, okay, so Joanna Dark speaks very silently, very quietly, and immediately a fuckload of enemies are alerted to her presence. That sucked. That fucking sucked. There's the escape pod. Okay, <laughs> fuck all that shit. Vinny, no sta uh, save state cheesing. No. I really try to avoid that unless I'm at my wit's end. I don't feel the same sense of pride and accomplishment unless I complete it without save states. 
but if something is like exceedingly bullshit, like next level bullshit, like what we just saw, if that happened for like an hour and a half, I would consider using the save states. Someone said, what are some good vine sauce runs to watch back as someone new to the channel? Um... Well, not runs. I'm not really a speedrunner. <laughs> uh, Subnautica was, was one of my favorite streams. Mother 3, if you like RPGs. Uh, I'll just list a couple of my favorites. I'm not the most qualified person, because I don't know... I don't think I'm particularly entertaining most nights. So, here's my, my thing. You might have to ask someone else, but uh, chat's doing that. Chat's answering the question. What I can tell you is the games that I enjoyed streaming the most, you know, stuff like um, Zelda, any Zelda, but Breath of the Wild was, was a lot of fun. Uh, Mario Odyssey was probably a couple of good streams in there, maybe. RimWorld was my favorite of recent memory. But if you want to watch, like, one-off streams, then Corruptions, and... There's a whole section on the Full Sauce, uh, channel for all that. And then there's the... Excuse me, the highlights. Which condense it all down. Just purely in terms of, like, enjoyment. I usually tend to enjoy the, um, like, Chrono Trigger. I streamed that recently again. I loved it, as always. Super Metroid. Link to the Past. Any of my favorite games you'll probably enjoy because I'm enjoying a little bit more than usual. Bloodstained. Yeah, I like that game. That was cool. I'm gonna have to make, like, a top 25 games of all time list at some point. Do it now. Well, I can give you my top 10, and then I, the, the other 15 would be hard, so I'd have to think about those. But my top 10 in this order, for now, is uh, Chrono Trigger, Super Metroid, Link to the Past. DMC 2. No, um... Chrono Trigger, Super Metroid, Link to the Past. Whoa, Metal Gear Solid? One? Maybe would be number four. Like, probably Half-Life after that. Uh, Final Fantasy IX would be maybe like nine. Let's put it at nine. So number six would be... Final Fantasy 6? No, uh... No, maybe, uh, Mario 3 would be number 6. I think Mario 3 feels like a good... Because that game had a, a huge impact on me, and still does. I think it's just the best Mario game uh, of the 2D variety, still. Even though World is great, and would probably also be in my top 10 or 15. Uh, Symphony of the Night would probably be number 7. Number eight would 
be maybe I wouldn't say Majora's Mask or Ocarina because they're it's too tough. This is hard. I wouldn't put Secret of Mana in my top 15 or even 25. I love it, but it's it's flawed. It's pretty it's pretty flawed at times. Number eight. Majora and, and Ocarina are too too difficult for me to choose. But they would be like, you know, like a probably within two or three spots of each other. Skies of Arcadia wouldn't be top 10, no. No, Perfect Dark wouldn't be in my top 10 or 25, but it's- it's great. It's just not- it's not up there. Uh, Chrono Cross would maybe be in my top 50. Star Fox 64 would be in my top 25. I know this is a weird way to go about this, but this is hard. It's hard to do it in order. Like, you know, Breath of the Wild, I love, but would that be in my top 25 or 50? Maybe 50? Just because it had a huge impact on me. I think it's the best open world game I've played. But I wouldn't necessarily say... You know... It's better than the other Zelda games. Uh, give me a minute to think about a couple more games here. Uh, yeah, I need to, like, keep my mind occupied while I'm doing this- this mission, otherwise I will go insane. I wouldn't put CSGO up there. CSGO is great, like, Counter-Strike in general, I'd probably put somewhere on the list, like, just as a, you know, an overarching, like, oh, Counter-Strike. That would be somewhere. Mario RPG would be top 25 and not 10. Bloodborne would be top 25, perhaps? Or 50? I'm still trying to find my number 8 and my number 10. Like, I could throw Metroid Prime on the list easily, but I don't think it's 8 or 10. Vinny, you don't like Banjo-Tooie? No, not really. Outer Wilds is too new for me. I just streamed it a couple months ago, so I can't put that reliably anywhere on my list because I wouldn't... I need more time. Diablo 2? Oh, that's a good choice. Warcraft 3 might be number 10. I think Warcraft 3 is a number 10 candidate. Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. And now I need a number 8. Yeah! Yeah! Resident Evil 4, perhaps, would be my number 8. So I think we have a top 10 list, chat. 
Someone posted the, the disgusted face. I'm sorry you can't enjoy that game. I love it. So, in order, top 10 is... Chrono Trigger, Super Metroid. This list could change, by the way. Chrono Trigger, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, Half-Life... There's the escape pod. ...or Metal Gear Solid. I can't choose between the two. Um, already forgot number six. Mario 3, Symphony of the Night, thank you, Resident Evil 4, Final Fantasy 9, and Warcraft 3. This is my list. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Vinny, what about a Games of the Last Decade Top 10? I did that already, actually. I did that, um, as we entered 2020. Final Fantasy 7? That would be in my top 25 for nostalgia purposes. Dark Cloud 2, that's a really great game. Um, I don't know if it's in my top 25, or anywhere, like, up there, but... Would Majora be top 25? Majora would be probably, like, number 18. At times, I thought Majora was my favorite Zelda, but Link to the Past, I just can't top. I think Majora is still my favorite 3D Zelda because of the the way it makes me feel like having streamed the randomizer was kind of a nightmare but that's also randomizer but the game itself just had a huge impact on me when it came out and still does so for those reasons majora is is an important game You could throw, like, a Mega Man X game, like the first one, in my, like, top 20, 25, something like that. Like, there's a lot of, like, then you have, like, other Castlevania games, like Castlevania 4. Castlevania 2. Uh, nope, not 2. Definitely not 2. Castlevania 3. There's a lot of the big series entries that would make my, my favorites. Uh, a lot of Zelda would be on that list. A lot of Metroid. Zero Mission might even be better than Super Metroid. In many ways. It's not for me. It's not for me, but Zero Mission has a lot of quality of life improvements. So it's improved in some ways, but I just, I like Super Metroid a lot better. What about Silent Hill 2? That's still a relatively recent play for me, but Silent Hill 2 definitely breached my top 50. Yeah, it's just mainly, mainly gameplay shit for Fusion and uh, Zero Mission, and Super Metroid has better, like, atmosphere and mood. Better secrets for me. What about Mother 3? Again, that's a recent game, I didn't grow up with it, but it, it definitely is in my top 50. Listen, in terms of RPGs, here are RPGs that are definitely 100% in my top 50 games. Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VI, 
which might even be like number 11 on my list. Um, Skies of Arcadia, Mother 3, Earthbound, uh, Secret of Mana, why not? Like, yeah, that's a top 50 game at least. Nine is number nine. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII might make my top 50 if I really... I mean, it'd probably be, like, number 50. Otherwise, I would still say Final Fantasy VIII has some, some pretty big problems. But I, I love it. I love it all the same. I just don't want to replay it. Fucking where is this dark area? It's a dead end again. Dragon Quest XI? Maybe. Any Kirby games on your top 50? Um, Kirby games aside, like Superstar probably, but... Kirby always has good games. But for me, aside from like Superstar and maybe Return to Dreamland... You know, and like maybe even... Some of the, like, Kirby 64. A lot of Kirby's games, for me, are just very good, and not greatest game of all time material. Same for Yoshi, except Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island is definitely top 25. I'll do what I have to do. I'll just keep playing until I win. Uh, oh, and Chrono Cross would be top 50, maybe 25. Again, I like to shit talk Chrono Cross. But that game has a very important effect on me and my brain. I love it. I just don't like playing it as much. I like watching Chrono Cross unfold. I don't like playing it as much, but uh, it's it's still worthy of my list, I think, my top 50. Of my uh, jabroni, nobody, uh, a pinata like assholes list that I have here. Soundtrack-wise, Chrono Cross is phenomenal. No, I think it- the sprites are beautiful. Well, not the sprites, the background, sorry. The 3D models. A lot of the story elements are interesting when they make sense. Um... I like the combat system a lot. Once you get into it and really fully understand it, I think it's actually one of the better RPG um, combat systems that tried something different. What about Sonic? I didn't grow up with Sega. So while I like Sonic 3 well enough, I did not grow up with Sega, and I have no nostalgia for Sonic. And Sonic 3 is very good, but that's all I got. That's the only one I've played all the way through. Fantasy Star Online? No, that wouldn't make my list. Pokemon? Come here. No. No, I don't think Pokemon. You know, I, I've liked the games, Red and Blue. I, I really enjoyed all that stuff. Um, I enjoyed Sun and Moon, X and Y. I took a big gap with my Pokemon from Red to X. I didn't play any of the games in there. I would not put Pokemon on my top games ever. But I've enjoyed what I've played. Smash Bros. 
Oh god. See, now this is gonna upset people that play melee. I love melee, and that's my favorite. Melee is probably the most hyped I've ever been for a game, aside from, like, a Zelda game. Um, and I think melee is... the most fun I had with Smash because of uh, me being younger. But if I had to put a Smash on my list, it would be Ultimate because it has everything. It's not the same gameplay, it's not lightning quick VCR repair, but, you know. And I don't play competitively, so for me, Melee has never been... You know, the Holy Grail. But it was my favorite game release. I remember my uncle drove me to the store to get it. I remember seeing the E3 footage while I was taking my SATs. And thinking the entire time, fuck the SATs, I want to see E3, I want to see Smash. I couldn't believe how good, like, Fox's blaster looked in the trailer. Like, I, I have a lot of... Yeah. I have a lot of very specific Super Smash Bros. Melee memories. So it's a pretty big game for me upon release, and, um... Yeah. How did I see it during? Oh, it was right before I went to go take an SAT. And when I got home after that, I went and watched the footage. I had to download it. Yeah, it was like a quick time video. How did you do on the test? I don't remember. It was not terrible, but not amazing. Like, I wasn't... You know, I didn't finish the SATs and I, like, I, I didn't fail them, or like, do terribly, but I, I wasn't like, in the top percentile. I was pretty fucking average. I was always a, um... In grammar school, I was like, a 90 to 100 average student, right? And in uh, high school, I went down to like, 80 to 90 average. And then when college occurred, I was like, oh, freedom! And I just failed several classes. And I had, like, a terrible GPA until I got my shit together and then actually, like, paid attention in class. How much was tuition? Mate, it wasn't cheap, but I'll tell you what, I had to go and- never see them now. I had to go an extra semester. Because I, um, I dropped several classes and I, I failed a couple in the beginning, so... My, um, the consequences of my... Of me not having any- that's why I became an English major. I- I didn't like any of the classes. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was too wishy-washy about it. And I did an extra semester, and guess what? As one would expect, that extra semester ended up with more student loans. And I think I finished paying off my student loans at the age of 30, 31? So... But, yeah, that's my school experience. But, um, you know, that said, I'm happy I got to see the Smash Brothers Melee video. That's all that matters. What? Why did Preston get killed? How did Preston get killed? Where?
will be able to protect the president. <laughs> That was fair. There's the escape pod. Someone said this game seems bad. Um. 20-year-old dated game design. But this was definitely... This was definitely a game that, you know, was really good for its time. I can't... Listen, if you see that and you're like... Nah, that's super cool that the president was killed. Like that. The president just ran into bullets. Like, no, it's not. It wasn't. That was- that was shitty. Even just checkpoints. Like, one checkpoint would help, but... That's not what this game is about. That's not what Rare did with their first-person shooters. Yeah, the multiplayer was amazing. Now picture this gameplay with the really cool weapons it has, really cool levels, music, in multiplayer with no failable objectives. It's nice. But also you get like 10 frames a second. On the original, at least. Okay! Ah! Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just Donkey Kong. When I made the decision to stream this game, I looked online, right, real quick, and I saw a full, perfect, dark playthrough, five and a half hours. I was like, wow! I was like, I could knock that out, no problem. But then I remembered that it's not quite that easy. Now, if I- and that was the, the highest difficulty, but the person who played it wasn't a speedrunner, but they just knew where everything was, and they were very, very fast. So yeah, you could do this in five hours, if you're familiar with the game's objectives. And you don't die. Though I will defend the game, for anyone who has made fun of the game's visuals... Again, N64. This is what the N64 was capable of, because... Nintendo, uh, didn't switch to a CD-based format, and they 
you know, tried their own stuff, and in some ways it had some decent tech over the PS1. But, man, do some of these games look like blurry shit stains. Gotta check for any guards! Got any guards? CDs don't have anything to do with visuals. Well, the amount of space. You can- you can fit a lot more stuff on a, uh, CD than you can on a cartridge. That's just lame- in layman's terms. In Riker terms. It's coming from that ship. In English, Jordy. Alright, Captain- uh, Commander, well, shit's fucked up. Uh, understood, Jordy. Jordy was the best Star Trek character in Next Generation. Maybe. Well, I'm just biased because I like LeVar Burton. He's not my favorite, but I think he's a relatable character. I, I just said that to be... I don't know. That was my hot take, but truthfully... I really like Jordy's uh, screen presence and his... When he does have a good plot line, which isn't often, but he, he gets a couple good ones. And he's also kind of like a loser. Sometimes. And I like that about him. He's like down on his luck a lot. He's just a regular ass dude. That's really smart at computers. He's no Barclay. Like compared to Reg Barclay, Jordy is so confident. And just, like, really, really fine with all of his duties and, like, the crew, and, and he's fantastic. But, uh, compared to, like, someone like Riker, who's- Whoa! Who's banging, like, green alien chicks, because, you know, that's Star Trek from Shatner's days. They had to get the surrogate Kirk. That's the whole Star Trek 60s ethos. But yeah, Jordy's just, like, a regular dude who's really smart, and... Very likable and relatable. What about Miles O'Brien? Uh, that's another just regular dude, yeah. That's why they tortured him so much in Deep Space Nine. Because the audience could relate to him the most. So they put... O'Brien through the worst shit they could, so the audience would feel more empathy. What about Wesley? Wesley wasn't as... He's really not as bad as people say he is. He's no Alexander. The problem with Wesley is they just give him all the solutions in the early seasons. Like, we can't figure this out, Captain. And then Wesley's like, well, with the power of childhood innocence, and a little bit of genius, I can solve every one of the ship's problems. You'll never see them now. And then when they got rid of Wesley, they just had Data do most of that stuff. Elvis is like, Ah! Jorina, that's the clone! Kill! Kill! Mission failed. Elvis, he'll be able to protect the president. Oh, thank God. 
That took an hour. How are you feeling, Mr. President? Better now, young lady. Today, I think, will take a while for me to get over. I can't believe Easton would do such a thing. I knew he was ambitious, yes, but this... Just one thing, sir. What is the Pelagic II that Trent wanted so badly? It's a U.S. government deep-sea research vessel, one of a kind. The only ship that can conduct a full-scale diving operation at extreme depth. Trent wanted me to loan it to the Datadyne Corporation, but I refused. Elvis is amazing. Trent has a lot to answer for, but I don't think we'll find him now. You have failed, Easton. You are a flawed device, and we need you no longer. Just try it, you Scandinavian freak! <laughs> oh my god! Pretty cool reveal, huh? It's the story of the, the Greys and the Reptilians and Shigeru Miyamoto. Bunch of Mario's. You go on ahead, Joe. I'll secure the perimeter. We'll meet up later. Just a just a moment, chat. I forgot to lock the mouse in. gonna be another maze level, I forgot. Well, it's a lot of shoot. It's a maze level and you just passed your first objective. Activate the alarm! Warn the others! 
Well, shooting through the glass makes this a little easier, at least. fucking level design. What is going on? Where am I going? Navigation by memorization. to knock those scientists out. Okay. Is that objective one? That's number two. Okay, so objective one should be this way then. Oh, right, I remember this now. Did it shut down anything? Objective one still not complete. Pass the button. Corridors. Corridors! Here. Vinny, there's nothing down there? You go on ahead, Joe. Oh, cool. Warn the others! Someone earlier in the stream had a comment about, you know, Vinny, over the course of my streaming career, it's like, Vinny slowly discovers that his favorite games have not aged well. They'll be unable to conduct operations without any power. Okay, so now there's a switch down here. Someone said there's a tiny button down here. Tiny button. Tiny button down here. Tiny button. <laughs> yeah, Diablo 2 is still great. And Warcraft 3 is still great. And Half-Life and Metal Gear Solid.
basically any of the games that I put in my top 10 are pretty... are pretty good today. I think most people can still enjoy them. One second, chat. No, no one's no one's banned, chat. Just heard just heard vibrations, like weird noises. Okay, it's weird. Okay, now I need to find those scientists. Scientists are upstairs. So there's nothing down here then. The Skunjili Man replaced Vinny. Oh, no, no, no. Vinny is the Skunjili Man. I mean, I, I am the Skunjili Man. Uh, sure is mass murder down here from Joanna Dark. Sure is Joanna Dark dying. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, okay. They will be unable to conduct operations without any power. I think I now know why, even though I don't remember, like, a lot of this game's story stuff, some of the voice lines are so incredibly ingrained in my mind. It's because I died a million times. For every level, I've heard every voice line, like, 14 times. I get it now. Anyone's ever like shot someone in the ass so many times that their ass was just gone? Without the autopilot and the GPS, ship will wander off stage. Huh. That was a little demented, Joanna. Deactivate GPS and autopilot. Pull the plug on that. Now! Please, just don't hurt me! Die. 
Die, you traitor! Jeez. I don't understand. Did he just kill his friend? Sorry, co-worker? We don't know if they were friends. Yes, and then you did. You go on ahead, yeah. Joe. I'll secure the perimeter. We'll meet up later. Vinny, did you see the objects flying by the moon on Twitter today? No. Warn the other. I've come to a, a point where if it's on Twitter, I need more. Like, I, I can't just take Twitter. So, whatever objects you're talking about, I'd love to see that. We always come to this point of like Twitter ban, and then people, you know, defend it, and then people are like, "Well, I just use it to post cats." And like again, that's you know that's all your choice. I don't I don't want to tell people how to use their social media. Do whatever you want. I'm just good. I'm, you know I'd prefer I'd prefer to get my uh, cats from a source that I know I can trust. E bombs world. I didn't press the button before. Pull the plug on that. Now! Please, just don't hurt me! Die, you traitor! Switch this thing off. Uh, I'll shut it down. Yeah, I have to go back and make sure I complete that mission. Vinny, do you feel that any social media has made you happier? Maybe at first. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing in concept. Like anything, there's like different facets to it, and it's not just all bad or good, right? But I don't lately have not been happy on social media. I just want to... I just want to... find information what the hell? in a way that doesn't have everyone's first thought. Usually their angriest thought immediately posted And then, like, you know, it's, again, it's hard to verify legitimate uh, stuff on Twitter and social media. So, um... I think, yeah, connecting with people and, and being up to date with people, like I said, I think it's fascinating that... The other day there was a bunch of fire engines, and I could just click on an app and see videos of the three-alarm fire. And I found out everyone was okay, where it was happening, and, like, people posting about it. That was incredible, like, technology. Like, that was a moment where I was like, I can't believe this is a real thing. It's a terrorist. 
so it has its uses. You can post, yeah, like someone said they post their Animal Crossing stuff. I mean, the good news is you can tailor various social media outlets to what you want. And so if you don't want to see the vomit of everyone and everything, you can just, like, you know, pick the things you want to see. Activate moon pool lift. So I gotta find that room again. Someone said the only social media I trust is Meverse. Good shit. The negative stuff is obvious and easy to, you know, discuss because it's just so in your face these days, but I think it's nice to see, like, if when Banjo-Kazooie uh, was announced for Smash and everyone was real excited about that, that made me feel really connected and happy. When Game of Thrones Season 8 ended up being complete shit, everyone was, like, together and united in, in how disappointed they were. Why is that gotta- why is he gotta keep shooting? You go on ahead, Joe. I'll the but yeah, I mean, as- as humans, our evolution does not include ESP. And so we don't have that connection the same way like fungus do. So therefore we had to evolve the tools and like a facsimile of ESP. However, that means that you can't read people's minds. And that's a problem for when, you know, they decide to make posts, but you don't know them from a hole in the wall. You know, that's why it's better to be fungus, is what I'm trying to say. They'll be unable to conduct operations without any power. I mean, think about it, chat. Think about how primitive we are as a species. We still make noises from our mouths. That's the same place we eat food, we throw up from. It's just like, like, wet meat noises that come from our throats. That's one step away from talking from our assholes. Which, social media, there's an easy joke there, but... It's just, you know, communication is, is still very primitive, I feel. That's why we need to evolate harder, so we can get to a, a better stage of our, our, our human evolution. <laughs> By the way, this is what Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey is about. Meat tubes making noises and becoming us becoming star children. Arthur C. Clarke. Well, here's the thing that's interesting about that. Arthur C. Clarke wrote a short story, which then the movie was based on, and then Kubrick changed it drastically, and then basically dictated to Clarke what the book of 2001 should be. And Clarke was writing the book 2001 based on the early rushes 
that he was seeing from 2001 the movie. So when people are like, well, there's a book that the movie was based on, that's not entirely true. Well, here's the thing. Clark did do his own thing. It's just they're two different pieces of media because what Kubrick had intended versus what was put on screen uh, versus rather what was put in the book. It's just two different authors take on a similar story. So when Clark explains what's happening in his book, that's not necessarily what you're getting from the movie. It's just a different interpretation. And, um, yeah, so it's a bizarre thing. It's not, it's, it's not as easy as, oh, the book was first in the movie, which is 90% of what happens with books and movies and adaptations. Adaptation. The Shining book is totally different. Well, that, Stephen King hated Kubrick for what he did to the movie. He didn't even want Jack Nicholson casts, which, could you imagine that movie without Nicholson? Kinda? Oh, alright. Well, I, I just, I like Nicholson a lot. Nicholson's actually, uh, probably one of my favorite actors of all time. I know that's a brave and controversial opinion. You know, one of the best actors, one of the most lauded, popular actors. I don't like this anymore. Well, King, I think he feels the same way, but I think he appreciates the movie a little more now in his older age. I just don't think he liked he liked what Kubrick did to his source material. But then King attempted to do a TV version of The Shining, like a TV movie, like very, very, very book accurate, and it's largely forgotten. So I think it's easy to say we'll just stick to the book. But, again, if Peter Jackson had stuck to the books 100% with Lord of the Rings, I don't think we would have something nearly as good as what we got. It would just be too... cold and... too much of it. I do miss the scouring of the Shire, but it, it would have fucked with the ending. That's probably the thing I miss the most from the movie. Escape and... Where do I have to go with Elvis? Chat? Up the stairs? The big door you opened? Okay. Just so easy to get lost. So why is the big door closed now? I have to rendezvous with him. He's at the lowest point in the facility. Someone said, Vinny, do you think the Lord of the Rings Amazon TV show could be any good? Yeah, I do. They're not adapting one-to-one -one source material. They're uh, doing stories in the Second Age. I think it could be good. Do I think it will be good? Maybe not. Is it going to be mature and edgy like Game of Thrones? Well, that's what we don't know that yet.
the tone of the show could really make or break it. If it goes dark and edgy, like, could be the, another Game of Thrones, it's not gonna feel like Tolkien. Um, but if the writing is good, yeah, maybe. It's gonna be apparently mostly new characters, but... Maybe Sauron in his human form, forging the ring, I think? There's someone here! Yes, I love Elvis's little snorkel. It's wonderful. Elvis. I, I really just want to be very careful here. If there's any Marios around any corner, I could lose this mission in a second. See what I mean? See what I mean? Do not kill Elvis, please. Taking the long way round. Guess that shortcut didn't quite work out, huh? <laughs> I am in pain. I am in a world of shit. Clear the gauntlet before saving your boy. You go on ahead, Joe. I'll secure the perimeter. We'll meet well, up later. <sighs> Paper Mario. I'm gonna take a quick break. I don't I don't really have the uh, patience to play that mission again. What can you do? Uh I would really you can just use the big door after you unlock it with the x-ray. Don't bother with the gauntlet. Yeah, that's... Uh, remind me of that next time, please. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'll be back... ...with, um... ...the Oregano King. So stick around. More aliens? <laughs> 